Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are building a very simple project. We are going to build a Golang project which checks if a website is running or it's down. And accordingly, we'll show the appropriate message in the terminal saying the website is up or running or it's down or not running, right? And you'll find these kind of projects uh, very easily on Google. If you go and if you check if the web is the website on, there are many projects like these and they basically run it free of cost, but then they show ads. So if you want to do that, we can do that as well. But it's just a great project to build and to basically practice your Golang skills, right? Uh, now, this project is going to be a part of the uh, Golang playlist, Golang project playlist. So in my YouTube, if you go to the playlist, there's a Golang playlist. It, right now it has 46 projects, so I have called it the 46 killer Golang projects playlist. But then the number keeps changing. So once I put this video, it will be like 47 Golang pro projects, right? So depending on when you watch this video, the number would have changed, but then you know, it's important to know that that, that playlist exists. And you can, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to arrange those projects in the increasing level of difficulty. And this project, since it's very small and very simple, we'll place it towards the beginning of that playlist, even though I'm uh, releasing it quite at the end, but I'm going to actually position it towards the beginning of the playlist. Okay. So with that out of the way, we can get started. I'll show you a couple of diagrams just to help you visualize what you're building. Uh, and then we'll just go ahead and build it. All right. Now, just before we get started, I just want to tell you that a very common name for this project that we're building is called the health checker, right? So for any project that you're building, you might also want to create a health checker microservice in case you don't want to launch this as your own project on the internet, completely fine. Uh, but you can, but usually when people build, let's say a project, and then they usually build a microservice which checks health of their own project. Uh, so with, with the project that we're building, you could do that, like check the health of your own project, or you could check the health of any website that's up or down. You can check that st status of that website. All right. Now we can get started. So now I think you can see my screen. Here, uh, we've just represented what we'll be doing in our code. So we'll have a main.go file, which will have the main function. And all we're doing is like importing the CLI package. So it could be any CLI package, like you could be using something like uh, Cobra or something like that, but I'll be using something very small and basic in this project because this project is small. Right? And um, we'll be passing two things. We'll be making use of two things. One is the flag. So we'll set two flags, which is the domain and the port. And the action for the CLI tool, tool would be to call the check function. Okay. The check function is going to be defined in a file called check.go. It's going to accept destination and port because that's what we'll send from here to this function, destination and port. And the whole business logic here or the, the crux of the entire program is the dial timeout function. So this function you get in this package called net, the net package, very popular package to work with uh, web, web related things in Golang. Right? So we'll use the dial, dial timeout package and finally we will return the status of the website, whether it's up or down. So that's the entire business logic here in the, uh, in the project. So now let's go ahead, create a new project and get started. All right, so now we'll start building our project. Everything that I'll be showing you in this video is already there in my GitHub account. So make sure you check out Akhil Sharma 90, which is my username on GitHub. All the projects are there. Check out the code in case you get stuck somewhere. We'll just create a new directory called go health check yt so we'll cd into it and what we'll do is we will um, go mod in it and i'll just give it my username dash go health check yt okay so now you can see the go mod file already uh, has been created and we will just open up our VS code and check out that, yeah, everything looks all right. Now I have decided upon the uh, package that I'll be using. It's CLI version two, and I found it on this uh, project, or on this profile called Yorfe. This is a common package. It's very, very light. So it, if you're not building something huge, like a proper CLI tool, I recommend using something like this, something very light, uh, like this there are thousands of packages like these by the way 
But if you're building something serious, then obviously Cobra CLI is, is the way to go. Anyways, now we'll create two files as you know, one is the main.go file and the other is our check.go file. Okay. In the main.go file, we will do the regular stuff, package name, import, the import statements and all of that. And in the import, I want to put this package so that it's clear that we're going to use it. And then you have your func main. That's how you start. Uh, that, that's the most important part in your main main.go file, obviously. And I'm going to go ahead and create an uh, create app, which is basically CLI.app, right? CLI being the package that I'm using. And this helps to create a complete CLI tool where I can give it a name, I can show how the tool is used, I can give in the flags, we've already talked about the flags and I can talk about the action. It's supposed to happen when we, you know, the right commands are, or the right, yeah, the right commands are given, what's the action that's supposed to happen, all right. So, yeah. Now for, for the name, what we'll say is, we'll say, let's call it health checker. And the usage, let's, it uses basically basic text on how this product is going to be used. So I'll say a tiny tool that checks whether a website is running or is down. And then there are the flags. So CLI dot flag okay and here you have the name which is domain and aliases string d and the usage which is the this is where you'll enter the domain name like for example google.com that's the domain name to check whether it's up or down so that's the domain and it's obviously it's required so it's required is true without this there's no point of the app if you don't, if you don't have this right all right so uh, in the flags there's one more flag that we're going to have which is the cli dot string flag it's going to be name will be port aliases string b usage port number to check and required false right now for the action We're going to have cli.context and we might return an error and let's define the port which is c.string and the port and if c.string and port is null which is empty then the port will be 80 right so what's happening here which is standard basically whenever you check anything you're checking on port 80 which is like the most common port right where, where the uh, the handshake would happen anyways but let's say um, you but you can you can say any port you can mention any port here but if you have not mentioned any port here the default port which is 80 which is the one that that's always checked that's the one that will be um, set right for the port variable and then you have status is equal to check so this is the check function i was talking about which which we will create in the other file called the check.go file and you're checking the domain and the port so we're sending two things to the check function which is the domain and the port which is what i had shown you in the diagram and we're going to print the status and return nil 
spot the error if everything goes well. Here we'll say error equal to app dot run. Okay, so you say app which you just created the whole app using the CLI uh, package, and you're going to say app dot run passing in the OS arguments, and you're also handling the error. So if there is an error, you can do something about it. If the error is not equal to nil, that means the error is there. It's a log dot fatal, and you'll print out the error. All right. And now we can work on the other file, which is check.go. So now we're going to go ahead and create the check.go file. Before that, what I'll do is I'll just say go mod diary, just to create the go.sum file. But there seems to be some problem. We'll fix it, no problem. So right now, let's just create the check.go file. Okay, so we'll say package main, which is also this part of package main only, not creating a separate package. And here, uh, there are a few more packages that I use actually like FMT and all those. And somehow they've not come up. So usually when I save the files, they come up like my plugins are not working. I think right now I'll just copy and paste them on my own anyways. All right, so here also I'll need some packages, so I'll just say fmt time and net. The most important one obviously here is the net package. You know that because the net package has the um, dial timeout function that we'll use to actually check the status of the website. So we'll say punk check destination, it's a string, and port, which is a string. And it returns a string, string being the status. So we return the status from the check function. So here we will say address is equal to destination plus port, right? Destination being the domain name and port being the port that you pass in or or even um, port 80, which is the default, right? So we'll say for the duration of five seconds is our timeout. So within five seconds, if you get a response back from the website, that means the website is on, otherwise it's not. Okay, this is the main part, which is we're using the net package and the dial timeout function we're going to send in the address which is basically the destination the port both combined with the timeout which is five seconds in our case and let's create a variable called status which is the one that we're going to re return from this function and here this error that we have which is you know, we're checking we'll have to now check for that error so we'll say if error is not equal to nil that means there is some error then we'll say status would be fmt dot sprintf down website is not reachable so to print out the name of the website star v oh sorry percentage v is unreachable the website is not reachable and you can Print out the error percentage v, and here the actual variables, which is destination and the error. All right. Else, we'll say status equal fmt dot printf, and we'll say up. Percentage V is to the basically the website is reachable, and then we'll print out from which address we had tried to which address. 
that means the destination comma connection dot local address right so your connection variable will have a copy of the local address the address at your end which is making the connect the, the request and the remote address basically the website and the port that you had mentioned just above and finally when you turn the status okay so all okay here i think to get rid of the error just remove this quickly and let golang do it for you so just say go mod tidy it'll get all the packages right that, that you're supposed to have and it'll also generate the go.sum file for you here uh, in the main.go file there's an issue because there's a small spelling mistake it should have been aliases and uh, but i see one more error so let me quickly check yeah the other thing is that there's another spelling mistake here it's cli all right so hopefully everything should be fine now but i still see one more error all right so uh yeah that's one more issue which is spelling of name is wrong so just save it everything seems fine now to me uh here so by flag you know what you mean by flag is that when we run this uh tool now we'll have to pass the flag so let me actually show you how to do it so we'll say go run dot minus minus domain which is the flag now in our case and put it pixels.com so it's saying it's reachable right so if you say google.com and amazon.com yeah so all the websites are up at the moment all of them are reachable all right so that was our simple yet effective tool that we've built and we've done we've done quite a bit in this tutorial uh, it's a very very tiny tool but then a lot of concepts have been used here so i hope you've learned quite a bit thank you so much for watching do make sure you watch all the other projects in this series because there's so much to learn right and thank you so much for watching and do subscribe